Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this! Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? Yeah! That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya! What is happening third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number 16. Now, I hope that you have your worksheet that you need for today because we're about to get started. And if you're thinking, whoa, I don't have the worksheet, don't worry. Click the link below or somewhere around this video. It'll take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in the third grade Math FSA Bootcamp Series. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead in just a second and pause the video and solve number one and number two on your own. But listen, I made a little bit of a mistake. I actually just filmed video number 16. Yep, I filmed it, but I didn't realize that I wasn't recording on this camera. So thank goodness while I was recording, my Okio cam picked up all the audio and the teaching. So you're just not going to see my face for just a little bit, but don't worry, I'll come in in the end and let you know exactly where you can go for some more practice with the skill of this video. Okay, so I'll see you soon. You're gonna join me in just a second, just not the face, but all the teaching is still there. Work hard, throw down your best, and come on back to check your work. I'll be right there. You just won't see my face. All right, bye. Okay, third grade, welcome back. You know how I like to roll first. We're gonna go ahead and start with the question type. So I'm seeing select all and I'm seeing five answer choices. So what kind of question do you think this is? Yeah, it's a multi-select. It means that there could be more than one answer choice. Usually if there's four answer choices, it's a multiple choice, but here it's a multi-select. Now let's go ahead and read the question carefully and mark up our text. So this says select all. That means that we're going to try all of the start times and end times that have an elapsed time of 45 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down how I solve elapsed time problems. And I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly, but if you know that you need more help with elapsed time, I have tons of videos on my website at McCarthyMath155. So stay tuned until the end of this episode and I'll make sure to point you in the right direction, okay? For choice A, we have a start time of 8.35 a.m and an end time of 9.20, so here's how I'm gonna do it. I know I'm starting at 8.35, okay? I'm gonna count, I can't go a whole hour, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get to five more minutes to get to 8.40, so that would be plus five minutes. And then I know that I can get to nine o'clock if I add 20 minutes because 40 plus 20 will get me all the way back up to the top of 60. So 840 plus 20 minutes would be nine o'clock. And then from there, I just need to get to 920. So how many more minutes is that? Yeah, 20. So let's add 20 more. 
plus 20 minutes will get me to 920. And then what I have to do is add up my minutes. So I have 20 plus 20, which is 40. And 40 plus 5 is 45. So yes, A works. Now I'm going to show the work for B. So we have 10.05. 10.05 is our start time. I'm going to add five minutes just to get to that 10, 10, 10. And now I know I'm going from 10, 10 to 10, 50. So that would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So plus four tens or plus 40 equals 10, 50 as my end time. And now we have 40 plus five, which is? 45, so B is also correct. All right, let's check out C. C says we have a start time of 1118, and we're going until 1213. All right, so 1118. I'm going to count up two minutes to get to 1120, so plus two minutes would get me to 1120. And then I know I can get all the way to 12 o'clock to 12 o'clock, 20 plus what gives me 60 minutes back to 12 o'clock? 20 plus 40, right? So plus 40, and now I have to go to 12, 13. So going from 12 to 12, 13 would be plus 13 minutes, and I'm looking at it, and I see 40 plus 13, which is 53, plus two, which is 55, that is too much. So we can go ahead and eliminate that one. Let's take a look at D. We have a start time of 1.23. We have an end time of 2.45. Ooh, you know what? Just by looking at this one, going from 1.23 to 2.45, that's more than what? That's more than an hour. So for D, I can put more than one hour because 123 to 223 would be 60 minutes, and we have to go past that to 245. So no, we can go ahead and eliminate D. Last one, let's take a look at E. We've got 350 as our start time. I'm gonna count up 10 minutes to get to four o'clock, and now we can go all the way to 425, which would be plus how many minutes? 25 minutes, and now we have 25 minutes plus 10 minutes is 35 minutes, so no, we can go ahead and eliminate that one. Not quite 45 minutes that we need. Okay, so I did this kind of quickly. At the end, I'm gonna point you in the direction of some more practice for elapsed time. So if you know that you need some more help, stay tuned, all right? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at number two. Okay, for number two, let's identify the question type first. I'm seeing that we have to grid our response or our answer. So this is a gridded response. Awesome. Okay. And it's definitely a time problem because it has a clock right there. So let's go ahead and read it and mark up our text. It says that Gus loves to read. So do I. Last night, he finished reading at 6.54. So he finished, that's our end time at 6.54 p.m. at night. If he began reading at the time on the clock, that means that this is our start time, how many minutes did he spend reading his book? Okay, so the number of minutes is gonna go in here. So we have somebody named Gus, he loves to read. He starts reading a book at the time on the clock, he ends it at 6.54. We have to figure out how much time has elapsed or how much time has gone by. So. Let's start with our start time. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give myself a little more room and bring it right down here. At Okay, we got to identify the time on the clock, though. So I always start with the minutes first. That's the longer hand. That means that my hour is right here. Okay, so the minute is pointing directly at the 9, which would be if we start at 12 and count by 5s. That would be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So it's something 45. And then when I look at the hour hand, it's pointing in between the four and the five and closer to the five. Even though it's not quite five o'clock yet, it's almost five o'clock, which is why that hour hand is pretty close. How do we know that? Because the minute hand is almost back up to the 12. So it's not five o'clock, 
it's still 4.45. It's almost five o'clock. And now we're getting to our end time of 6.54. Okay, so because we have, because right now we're in the hour of four, I'm gonna go ahead and count a whole hour. So plus, and because my answer needs to be in minutes, I'm not gonna say plus one hour, I'm actually gonna say plus 60 minutes. That would be 5.45. I could do another 60 minutes because I know that would be 6.45. And now I just have to get to 54. So 45 plus five would be 6.50. And then I just need four more minutes to get to 6.54. And now all I have to do is count up the minutes. So I have 60 plus 60, which is 120. And then I have 120 plus nine, which would give me 129 minutes, 129. Now you don't have to write minutes in here, obviously, but you do need to make sure that you are 129, 129 is in the right place. So make sure you have one digit for each digit spot. And you can start it from the left side or if your teacher prefers that you start it from the right and go nine, two, one, or 129 like that, that's totally cool too. Just do not put it randomly in the middle. Pick a side and go with your teacher's side. Stick to what they say, I support them. Make sure you're fully bubbled in, that way when the computer scans your test, you've answered confidently with a nice darkened bubble. All right, so if you know that you need some more help with this skill, I want you to check out McCarthy Math 155. You're gonna check out unit 11. That's the time unit. Now the cool thing about McCarthy Math 155 is that for third grade, we practice time the entire year. That's right. We dedicate a small little bit, a small moment in time to practicing telling time, which is awesome because by the time you get to unit 11, you're ready to rock and roll with elapsed time. If you know that you need some more practice, I really encourage you to check out unit 11. Now, you do need to become a member in order to see the videos, but everybody can get a free seven day trial. All you need is an email address, and while you have your free seven day trial, watch as many videos as you can, and maybe it's the right fit for you, and you wanna continue with your membership. And teachers, just so you know, if you decide to become a member, this is something that you can share with your students. In fact, so many schools and districts are doing this every day as a daily math intervention with their students and the kids they love it they pretty much beg their teachers for it every day like my I get emails all the time of teachers saying my kids just love watching your videos and I love it. it makes my heart so happy so teachers this is something you can share with your students check out the tutorials tab on my website video number five and I break down how to share it with your students okay the next link that I would like to point out is to the how to pass the math FSA video that goes with the same standard that we worked on today. Now the How to Pass the Math FSA series was created several years ago. In fact, it was my very first series on YouTube and it was back when the FSA was a computer-based test. So some of the questions, they look a little different because it used to be a test on the computer and now it's a test in a booklet on paper, we call it a paper-based test which is why I created the Math FSA Bootcamp series to reflect the paper-based tests. Still, the How to Pass the Math FSA videos provide great practice, so go ahead and check that out. Also, I'd love for you to stay in the know with everything going on with McCarthy Math Academy, so you should totally follow me on Instagram or on Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy, and you can even find me on YouTube, of course, at McCarthy Math Academy. If you are watching this on YouTube, if you could please smash that like button that would be super amazing, not just because it makes me feel good, but it supports my mission. Because you see, I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for as many third, fourth, and fifth graders as possible. And when you smash that like button, it brings more students to me so I can help them because y'all, I'm so, it breaks my heart when students just struggle and struggle and struggle with math and they're not getting the help that they deserve. I wanna create these videos because y'all deserve them. So thank you for helping me out on my mission. 
While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice and I will see you all on the next episode.